What up everyone, Zono Bra here coming at you with another episode of my podcast, The Zono Podcast. This week guys, we are going to talk about League of Legends and the recent news. We're going to talk about words and we're going to talk about news from the founders of League of Legends. If you haven't heard, stay tuned till, till the end of the second part of the podcast, I guess. So I guess this week is just going to be about League of Legends and words. I'm not going to talk about PUBG, I'm not going to talk about anything else. Uh, if I need to, I will do maybe another video, but for this podcast, I will solely talk about words um, and what happened during group stage, what what did I what did I think about some, perform- for, some perf- performance of some teams. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over some stuff, and I will release another video to tell you a little bit about my prediction uh, when it comes to semifinals, and I will publish that on a different video, so feel free to subscribe and just tune in to, uh, to look forward to that. So let's get started. So the group stage for World uh, 2017 in League of Legends are finally over. Uh, after amazing matches, some surprises, some disappointments, uh, we finally have the teams that qualify. So I'm gonna go over the groups, and then I'm going I'm gonna go over the semifinals that we should expect starting next week. Uh, I think it starts on Thursday or Friday. I'm not sure, but I will let you know once I see it. So let me switch the, the camera from the other scene and let's get right into it. So let me do full screen on this. So the group one guys, no surprise, SKTT1, uh, number one. Oh, first of all, I want to say, my pick and video did super well and I'm really happy. Like We have like over 2,000 views, which is insane. Um, I got a lot of comments. I had to talk. I had the chance to talk about uh, a lot with you guys, and I thought it was interesting. It was more a video to tell you a little bit what I wish words was gonna be about, and not what what team was gonna most likely gonna qualify because there's not there's no point in that. Like if you don't take risks in predictions, like where are you gonna take them, right? So I was just having fun. I put like Fnatic one first. I put TSM first, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, just just for the fun of it. Uh, it was not. It was just my pick in. It was not like the pick in or the most likely pick in. So let's uh, close the parentheses in this and let's go to Group One. SKTT One five one. Great, great performance. I mean, they look really, really clean. They did lose a game against Edward Gaming. Uh, I think so. And it was just. I don't know. I feel like it, it didn't even matter. Like SKTT One just looks so good, and I cannot wait to see their matches against Longzhu Gaming because this is gonna be the Probably the top level of League of Legends we've seen in a very, very, very long time. In the second place, guys, we have Clan 9. So Clan 9, I don't know, some, a lot of analysts, especially in Europe, they say that Clan 9 just got lucky as fuck. Like, which is really not true, but not false as well. I want to say that they, I don't know, I feel like it's, it, I think it's a situation where Clan 9 isn't really, that, they were not really like amazing. But AHQ and EDG were just not really impressive against uh, Clan 9. And it was like, it was kind of like, what the hell is happening? Um, so I don't know. It was really weird. And then Clan 9 just took the lead at 3 3 and go number 2 of Group A. AHQ kicked out of Words. Edward Gaming kicked out of Words, which is so surprising. Edward Gaming did so well last year. Uh, it's such a big, like. Uh, structure in China, it's insane. I don't even know how they not only they lost, but they lost at 2 4. Like, they have four losses, it's insane. So, let's move on. Group A, the biggest surprise, of course, is uh, the performance of Clan 9, and they they are the only representative of NA. Unfortunately, we're gonna talk about TSM right after. Uh, Clan 9 is gonna be the only representative of North America at Words, and I don't think I don't think they're gonna go past quarterfinals, unfortunately. Uh, but again, as I told so many times on so, so many of my videos, Clannon is happy about getting out of group stage. Like they don't plan on winning words. Uh, if they, they don't, I don't think they even care about winning quarterfinals at this point. They do, but they're also happy to take longer vacation and just not really give, give a shit because their fans are already happy. They're the only NA out there making it out of groups. They come from a very difficult group, and I mean this is just the sense and the vibe I'm getting from this situation. Group B guys, we got Longzu Gaming, Fnatic, uh, Marines, and Immortals. Immortals were so bad, like so so bad, and it shows you a little bit like, like I don't know. It's weird because they work so hard and they go and boot camp and they go to China and they go to this. They play against the best teams. They play all day every day. Uh, 
but it's just the team, like synergy and just like the group performance that is just so bad at an international scale. When you play against any teams, not to insult any teams, but compared to the world, it's very, very low level. It is easy to, to feel good, right? Like when you're the best of the worst, you feel good. Like you have like, like your ego is like very well treated or nourished or whatever. And when you go to an international scale and you get commonly stomped, you're like, you become irrelevant. I feel this is exactly what happened is that Immortals, they were chilling in NA. Like there was not a lot of competition in NA. Like besides Immortals, maybe a Clan 9, TSM. Who who else was there? Like honestly, who else was there to take the lead or to take anything? So Immortals, I'm not surprised of their of their performance. I actually I'm kind of surprised of their performance for some games where I was like, I was in front of my skin. I was like, yo, what is this? Like, what is those people are pro gamers? Like, I I literally had this. Like, there's like, what the hell is happening? Like you had games of Longzu Gaming. Longzu Gaming is probably gonna win this World Championship to be honest, but still, Longzu Gaming just crushing immortals like in 10 minutes you could tell that the game was over like the rotation the pressure uh the vision control all that was just so the macro and the micro gaming was so much better executed you can tell that there's so much to learn like immortals is here Longzu is here and this, this gap is going to be so hard to perform and to perfect uh, from uh, immortals but they have a lot of things to work on and uh, hopefully they're going to learn from this experience 2-5 though i think they they won against they won against fanatic and marines once uh damn there's so much dust in my i have to clean that shit fanatic uh fanatic i was so surprised as well fanatic played so well in some of the games against uh marines and immortals uh longsu didn't win a game though that's so that's so cool i think this is so cool they had a lot of like trouble in tie breaks. Like there was a lot. They played eight matches instead of. Uh, they had to play two tie breaks. Uh, the pressure was really, really on. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Reckless, and I really wanted to see him perform and to do well and to shine. There's Soaz as well, who is French. That um, I actually never got the chance to meet him, but we used to work together. Um, like we, he came to the studio once. Uh, to answer interviews, so he's very close from the studio I used to work with. Um, so I don't know. I felt kind of a, like a, a fan, I guess, or just because he's a representative of French uh, in an international scale. It's always nice. Um, so yeah, Longzu, uh, Longzu, Longzu, perfect. Fnatic did really well. Tie breaks were really tiring. I could feel, it, and I feel like they're gonna perform in semifinals, but it's so hard to say. It's really hard to say. I just wish them the best. Uh, Marines, I don't really have anything to say, to be honest. They are where they were expected. Number three is number three or four, whatever. Um, n not surprising, not like not a great like performance, just just where they're supposed to be. I was, I wanted to see at least Immortals like number three or number two, but like Gigabyte Marines was just like, yeah. And Immortals, if they're in the same level, like there's a problem. Um, if you guys haven't seen Lungzu Gaming and you want to see a replay from the group stage, just go watch Lungzu Gaming because it's like, it's the best level of gameplay you ever see in your life. This is just so clean. It's like, it's clean. It's not even great. It's not even amazing. It's just like clean, flawless. Like everything just flows. And it's so impressive to see because it looks like an AI. It looks like an AI. It looks like something that's perfectly like done every time. They're not playing as the best team, right? Don't get me wrong. But I cannot wait to see like uh, SKTT1 versus Longzu Gaming. This should be the best League of Legends we've seen. Group C, guys, we got Royal Never Give Up, Samsung Galaxy, G2 Esports, and uh, 1907, uh, Fenerbahce Esport. Uh, 1907 going 0 6, unfortunately for them. It's just a, this is just a, like a shit happens sort of situation. We, not, nobody was expecting great performance from them, they did what they could. It's okay, whatever, let's move on. Next is G2 Esports with going 3-3 three, three, um, on this group. It was very, not like heartbreaking, but it was just like so hard to see them lose. Um, I think they lost against like Galaxy and it was such a tough game to watch because it was just so, like the pressure was so on. And, and just G2 is so talented. I think G2 is... 
they didn't play to their full potential. I can tell. I, I, I really, really, really think so. I really think they could have pulled it off. But unfortunately, Galaxy just won. Uh, Samsung Galaxy just won. Um, it was just, it was super tight. It was really tight. And there's nothing really to say. Like, Samsung Galaxy and G2 Esports have close to the same level of gameplay. Very different strategy, very different strengths and weaknesses, but still very interesting gameplay and not a lot of mistakes from both sides. It's just that they took, they just went into a game and they just played better, they took opportunities and it just paid off. Nothing really much to say. G2 is not going to the quarterfinal and they're out, they're going home. Royal never, Royal never give up for Group C though. Uh, we've seen a lot of interesting things from the Chinese team. Five win and one losses. I think the losses was against G2 actually. Um, and they're just really impressive. They're really, really impressive. They're one of the Chinese team that I think we could at least see it for the semifinals. But honestly, the top tiers right now, Longzhu, SKT, and Royal never give up are absolutely bonissimo. Like bonissimo. Very, very, very interesting gameplay. And this is this is what we this like literally like this is why we love League of Legends. This is why we love esports. It's just for these levels of gameplay and have them like cl uh, clashing each other. It's just gonna be so interesting, and I cannot wait to see it. I cannot wait to see it. Like I cannot, I cannot wait. So Group D guys, I think Group D was one of the most interesting group to see at least, um, because obviously, I mean, it was very fresh. So it was like I think it, like it was yesterday, and. I want to talk about TSM, I want to talk about Misfits, but let's just get rid of... Okay, Flash Wolves, very disappointing performance uh, from a seed... Uh, I think they were seed 1, right? And they are like 1-5. Yeah, they were seed 1, 1-5, one and they won against TSM in a terrible game from TSM. Like, t like TSM just playing shitty, shitty, shitty performance uh, against a team that was 0-5. and five. Flash Wolves takes the win at 1-5, saves the honor, whatever... Just surprising. Like, there's always a team that is seed one at worst, and they're just shit for for some reason. I don't know. It's like a curse. But I don't know if it's always the group D though. But Flash Wolves was very disappointing. Nothing really to say. Like, just just a shitty performance from them all along. Every matches was just weird and super intriguing to watch because you're like, this team has done so well uh, in the region, and you're like, what the hell is going on? Like, they're not playing with the best teams like TSM, Misfits. They're they can be taken down, right? No, they just lost on games. They lost five games in a row in two weeks. That's so, so hard to take. Team Word Elite or WE, um, just to talk about the first ones, really good performance again. Super impressive. Super interesting macro gaming. I thought it was very, uh, very interesting how uh, their composition was built and how they just do a lot. Like, what I love about Asian teams, whether it's Korean, uh, Taiwanese, or Chinese, uh, not Taiwanese, just Korean and Chinese. Uh, so, Royal Never Give Up, Team W, Longzhu, and SKT. Is that they just do a lot in early games. And I think this is what Occidental teams are lacking of. Is that they don't do a lot in early games. Like, they just lane, they just chill, they just like, oh, couple ganks, couple vision, couple wards, couple counter jungle. You see Team W in early games, they do so much shit. Like, you can't even keep up. The analysts were so, like, oh my god, this happening, this happening. Oh, like, this guy is doing this. This guy is putting a ward while this guy is blah, blah, blah. It's just like, wow. Like, they use every minute of the game so well. Like, they just use the time and have a really nice synergy that is so impressive to watch. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, things to learn from. Uh, now, let's talk about Misfits Gaming and TSM. Let's start with TSM. So TSM, I mean, uh, there's a very nice interview from Travis uh, uh, Grifford um, that is just, it's an interview from, from Reginald, so the, the owner of TSM, uh, the old uh, mid laner for TSM, etc. That, uh, that, that, like, he had an interview right after the game, the last game where TSM lost, like the last tiebreak against uh, Flash Wolves, where Flash Wolves was 0 and 5. Uh, no, 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 not a, that was not a tie break, but whatever, like, when TSM was out, basically, uh, Travis interviewed Reginald, and Reginald said so many things that were amazingly true, is that a team, and, they, for, and I think this is the problem, and that, that's really the problem that I, that I keep expressing in my videos, one being uh, NA, LCS is the worst, and this is our fault, it's just that TSM has such a comfort in NA, all throughout the year, that is just killing them. Like it's a, it's like, 
it's it's a curse it's like they're good they're always winning they're always number two at least like it's always climb nine clg uh, tsm 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 like tsm just won so many splits that again it's an ego thing like you feel really good you really feel good all across the year you train against team that are not as good as you so you like it's all good and then every time you go to words you just get clashed on because when it's time to prepare the words like you have like a few weeks to prepare for it but when you're like lonzu when you're sktt1 the standard is just so much higher that it doesn't matter even if sktt is number one number two number three number four number five of korea is still way better than number one number two number three and number four of na so you get to play with better players all around and you just become better i mean it's the same thing everywhere like if you go, if you guys trying to play basketball and and you train with um like steph curry like let's say you train uh, with like in, in nba if you train in nba even if you suck in nba the fact that you learn next to people from the nba will make you so much better uh, once you play against people that are like in high school or whatever for me it feels like this korea league of legends is nba any league of legends is just high school shit high school shit and tsm is the best of his high school but when he goes to nba well the standard is higher and then they just suck and they cannot do anything about it because all year long all all during all split long they play against any teams that are not worth training against not worth playing against and until tsm understands that TSM will never go a step forward and they will only qualify by chance or just by a slight slight number of luck and they will lose probably in quarterfinals or semifinals uh, on, on a best of five uh, situation. Um, I wish it wasn't true and there's nothing TSM can do that instead of they can do screams at 3 a.m. against Korean teams and I, I, don't, I don't even know if they will want to because... SKTT1 has no reason to scream against TSM because obviously it's not the same standard. So it's very interesting to talk about, but let's talk about the performance. TSM cannot get out of group stage. If they have a curse or they don't have a curse or whatever. But this year, they really, really, really sucked. And fortunately, like, it hurts me. It pains me to say that. I have the jerseys. I have everything. But I don't know. They're not like... It's like, so Reginald said in, the, in his interview that it's a lot about individual, like TSM is an individualist team. They have a very good mid laner, they have a really good ADC, they have a really good jungler, they have a really good support, they have a really good top laner, they have a really good duo uh, of a bot lane, they have a really good bot lane overall. But when it comes to like creating something as five, doing something as five like shot calling doing all those macro um, management stuff vision control they're just not as good as the best teams in the world and reginald told the, 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 he said very honestly in the interview tsm didn't play well like there's no excuses like they the others just play better like that's it there's no excuses no bad luck no bugs no remake whatever tsm just sucked and as a fan of tsm let's say i'm a fan whatever I'm not ashamed of saying they sucked. Like they, they don't deserve to be out of stage. Like they, they, they don't. They really, really don't. And on, in contrario, like Misfits, a team that is rookie year, rookie year Mis Misfits Gaming, with a very tough three zero for the EU LCS split finals against G two Esports, got out of group stage and G two didn't. And I'm so happy for Misfits because. They have such amazing talent. Uh, and a lot of people talk about Han Sama. I'm not saying he's overrated, but I think like a lot of people love to talk about him, especially because he's French, because he's very young, because he's been playing for like a lot of teams. Uh, he is really good, very talented, and he will keep growing as he's only like 17 or some crazy stuff like that. But God, dude, let's talk about the top laner. Let's talk about the jungle. Let's talk about the mid laner. They're all absolutely crazy insane and it's not even it's a little bit like in rebound of tsm it's not even that if individually like they don't all win their lanes they're not all insane mechanically or whatever but when they start grouping when they start like really evolving together as a team like you can feel the shot calling you can feel the flow of communication and it just results on amazing stuff like winning against tsm uh, i think uh, two to three times winning winning against flash wolves that was so impressive, and I'm so happy they're going to make out of groups. So, 
For Europe, we're going to have Fnatic and Misfits as representative of Europe. For NA, we're only going to have Cloud9. Unfortunately, TSM didn't make it. For China and uh, Korea, we're going to have the rest. So we have Longzu, SKT Tiwan, Real Never Give Up, Samsung Galaxy, and Team WE. Now that we know about this, guys, let's just move on to... Um, Let's just move on to, where can I see the schedule? Okay, so schedule, guys, it will start on Thursday, October 19th, and we're going to start with Longzu Gaming against uh, Samsung Galaxy. Best of five, I would say that, I don't know, We actually, you know what? I'm going to do an individual video about this, but I'm going to tell you a little bit quickly what I think it's going to be. I think Longzu Gaming is going to win, okay? I think SKT T1 is going to win. I really want Misfits to win, but let's be real, like, this is hardcore stuff. Here, I think Fnatic is going to take it. And here, I really think that... Um, interesting. I think Cloud9 is going to take it, dude. They can do it. I know they can do it. Cloud9 is so surprising. I think it's going to be the type of shit that it's like... It's going to be like 2-0, Team WE, 2-1, 2-2, 3-2 for Cloud9. This, this, this is the vibe I'm getting from this. But again, they're really way, way favorite. So I can't really say anything else. So if you guys want more details about this, uh, tune in uh, to my other videos. I will just talk a little bit more in details about who's going to win, who I think is going to win, blah, blah, blah. I'll go back to the pick him uh, widget and just talk to you about a few stuff. So as well, I think that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the podcast here. I find it was a very full um, recap of everything that happened at Words, who were the surprises, who uh, were the disappointments, hashtag TSM. Sorry, man, but I don't know. They Reginald didn't say that he wanted to make changes in the roster. I don't think they do. I don't think it's a problem. Like people stuff like they have to stop changing rosters and they have to get a team to work together for like years. This is what makes a great team is that a team that builds synergy for years and years and years. I think this is so important. Like every time there's a problem, if you're trying to fix it by just replacing it, it, it can work sometimes when the, uh, the problem is obvious. But it's not obvious here for TSM. It's a lot of like just training, like grinding. They just need to grind League of Legends. Um, and yeah, that's it, guys. So I was going to talk about the news from Riot Games. Uh, I'll probably do a little video by myself. Um, maybe later, maybe this week. Uh, it was about the news that the co-founders stepped down from uh, their CEO and uh, uh, like president or whatever. CEO and president position to go back to game development. I thought it was an interesting news and I had my thoughts about it, but I will share that maybe on a Facebook Live or like a Periscope or something like this. So stay tuned. Go to my social media links down below. Follow me on Twitter. I'm super active there and I love chatting with you guys. Uh, I do a lot of like live comments of words and you guys should expect me to comment on some words uh, related stuff. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode 8, I think, for this uh, week. And uh, I'll see you next time, next week on Sunday. Uh, have a good week, guys. Take care. And I'll see you for the next one, guys. Cheers.